Hey everybody, welcome to the Knicks Cast. I'm your host, Matt. I'm Tyler. Steve. And I'm Josh. Alright. By the way, uh, I don't know where I'll, we'll end up cutting this for editing, because I'm sure that I'll have to put that beginning there in, to end, but... Uh, it took us at least three tries to get started. So those of you who are watching live, you've had some entertainment. I'm glad for that. I've been trolled again this week, so just put, you're going to have to put up with that. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Anyways, welcome to Linux Cast. This is the Linux show where we talk about Linuxy things, usually no, no, absolutely no tangents, and uh, no nuggies. Because these fuckers didn't even bring me any. I mean, seriously, if they're going to troll me with the word, they could have at least ordered me some. Bitches. All right, anyways. You got to come to Ohio first. McDonald's has delivery. <laughs> anyway. I'm not paying that DoorDash fee. <laughs> Especially out here, man. It'd be fucking ridiculous. Anyways, uh, this is going to be a horrible podcast, at least in terms of trolling Matt, because it's going to be you, everyone in the chat is, is going like crazy on it. And then to my fellow friends here who I thought were my friends but apparently hate my guts um anyways welcome so we love you dude today yeah we today we have a t good topic for you but before we jump into that we're going to be talking about what we've done this weekend open source as we usually do so Tyler you get to go first what have you been up to this week I did a video on Gentoo installing Arch Gentoo and then Fedora on the main PC. Then I did a live stream where Josh kindly gave me a hundred dollars. So I would install open man Driva on my machine, uh, which totally didn't go completely oddly weird where it boots on every other system in my house, but gives me a black screen on my desktop PC tried everything. I mean like different USB ports, different BIOS settings, I tried everything, switching up only using one monitor, two monitor. Like I've tried everything. It don't boot on it. So now uh, I did install or download a GNOME ISO f for it because maybe it's SDDM causing issue and I'll try that on it. But also got to keep Fedora ins installed for a little while just because I uh, got to do some like, you know, video editing, recording and like I got to record with Steve here soon. So, you know, kind of can't have another broken computer. He's been wanting to record me for two days and we ain't been able to do it because my computer keep breaking. <laughs> well, I mean, I could have done it on Fedora, but I figured I'd have it fixed by now. Nah. Well, I mean, the first time it was when the Wi-Fi, I couldn't figure out how to get the Wi-Fi to work. Turns out you just got to reboot it enough times and then the Wi-Fi will just work. I don't know why. Thank you, Fedora. But yeah. Oh. Buddy, oh. I am so sorry. I am so sorry. Here's your here's your nucky, dude. There you go. Good boy. Good boy. Mm. <laughs> so what have you boys been up to this week? All right. Uh, Steve, you next. What, what have you been up to? Okay. Uh, where should I start? I have been working with uh, a few friends of mine uh, on learning more about PKG builds because it turns out that you can run scripts called install scripts dot install scripts via pkg build i didn't know that uh, and you can run as many commands as you want within those anyway so uh besides that i was uh, learning more bash scripting thanks to my good pal vlk on the server he's been instrumental in the nvidia and wayland script uh, we're optimizing it even more now. We're reintroducing the 470XX drivers for not... I, don't, I wouldn't like to call those drivers legacy, although they are, but they're not old enough to be, uh, to be considered as legacy. They're 600 series and stuff. They're not really legacy. It's just they're old. So we're reintroducing those and no more TKG. Uh, I'm just in, uh, using the ones uh, being maintained on the AUR because they get updated faster than the TKG ones. I've been talking to TKG in the back, uh, in the back, uh, on the back burner and cleaning up uh, some packages from the packages file in all the ISOs because apparently the latest ISO felt like bloated because too many packages, uh, too many applications started showing in the app menu. So people want uh, less packages. So I will try to minimize uh, as much as I can because dependencies and uh, we're adding. I'm adding more support for joysticks and joypads and 
like the PlayStation 5 controller and stuff for gamers who like to use those kind of controllers. And for the window managers, because guess what? There's a few users out there who install Hyperland on Zero Linux because apparently since you have KDE, you can install Hyperland on Zero Linux pretty easily, just a couple of packages and you're up and running. So for those people, I include uh, I will be including something called X Remap KDE. Uh, X Remap basically allows you to remap uh, your if you have key broken keys or you can create override uh, or add more key bindings that don't already exist in the system and it it gives you more granularity over your key bindings and shortcuts and I'm learning more also about global shortcuts because apparently I'm late to the game. I saw a new setting in the KDE settings that I've never seen before since I don't use Wayland all that much. To me, it was new, but apparently it, was, it has existed since 527 for global shortcuts. And to me, that, uh, that meant that uh, the KDE people are taken consider- into consideration, the people who keep complaining about keyboard shortcuts not working outside applications and stuff like that. So... I'm learning more about that because I'm currently on Wayland and I have been using Wayland for the past three days on KDE. I've been using it for three months on my laptop on GNOME, but on KDE, that's the longest I've been on Wayland. And so far, absolutely zero issues. Uh, Josh, what you been up to? Well, since, you know, uh, I read this comment showing up on Zany's channel here where, where he challenged me to use either Void Linux or NixOS for a whole year, I've installed void linux and uh, i have already fixed three packages and i am now currently working on getting getting them submitted upstream to void linux to you know fix all my issues with void linux and you 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 broke lutris from what i saw uh i didn't break lutris i broke the pr that i that i pushed because oh. i i didn't i didn't amend my my last commit and instead when i pushed the commit it updated not just one package because according to their Git repository, you're only supposed to update one package at a time for, per PR. And that, I turned that PR from one package into 17 packages by accident. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, you're gonna get banned soon. Not yet. Okay. Eventually. Though. I close the PR. <laughs> All right. So I have been gaming like crazy this week. So I've been doing. I've been delving into some retro games. I've been playing some Pokemon. Uh-huh. I played some cities. I also got into some regular gaming. So I, a few weeks ago when City Skylines 2 came out, I bought that. And I've been playing that. It's been really good on Linux, guys. Like, super stable. Like, crazy. Uh, way better than the native Linux port was for CS1. Just way beyond. Uh, so that's been basically what I've been doing. Some And I played some Hearthstone. So I've been... Uh, I've been gaming when I say I'm not a gamer this, this last week and a half or so. It's been kind of nuts. It's, it's, I'm going to, uh, I haven't. Playing some Hearthstone? I might actually need to join you for some Hearthstone, man. I'm going to be honest. It's a good game. Um, anyways, I, I also, I've been looking into figuring out how to do some retro gaming on the Steam Deck because I've been, I played. I can teach you. I can teach you. Come to me, baby. Retro I can deck. teach you. Um, see, everyone has it. Pack. Everyone has a different recommendation over what you should use. So, I'm gonna go with Battle a couple Sarah. other people. Battle yeah, Sarah. Battle so I'm Sarah for the win. Stop Battle interrupting Sarah me, Steve. For, <laughs> for retro gaming, Battle Sarah. Okay, sorry. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the main topic. So today was a topic that has been a long time coming because Josh didn't show up for the first week, and then we took a week off and did something else. And Anyways, we're going to be doing, talking about NixOS, and it's seeing as how it's Josh's topic. Josh, take us away. Oh, yeah. It's funny. See, I, it's Steve, funny. Steve was <laughs> I say, everybody as impressed with NixOS as everybody else is in the world. My question is, is NixOS actually overhyped? Okay, do I have to go first? I'll go first. Okay, so I don't think that it... NixOS is kind of like Arch Linux was when Arch Linux was hard to install. People like to talk about it because it's different. You know what I mean? It's something that... You, not in, uh, it gets installed in the regular way now, like it didn't used to be, but now you can just use Calamari's installer. But because it does so many things in a different way, people find that impressive about themselves. So they manage their, their you know, they manage their entire distro through a configuration file that there's not any other distribution out there that really does it that way, right? Well, I mean, probably Geeks and, right? Does Geeks do it through a c- config file? Uh, geeks and Nicks are really about the only ones that have declarative configuration unless you want to talk about like the really fancy ansible scripts 
Okay. So, I mean, there's not many distributions out there that, that are like that. So because it's so different and does things in such a different way, I think people like to talk about it and think of themselves as doing something different than the, you know, everybody who's just using a regular Linux distribution. I think that's the reason why people talk about it so much. I've been using it now on hardware for well over a month. And I have to say, I'm not going to give away my review or anything, but it's fine. It's fine. I can, the, the documentation, by the way, is utter fucking garbage, like total garbage. But other than that, it's, it's fine. Well, but I mean, <clears throat> for Nix OS, like, and Nix has a package manager, I think they are overhyped in the sense that they are. A lot of people say that you should just start using them and it, it's great for any use case. And it probably does work for any use case. Cause I mean, as long as you can get a working Nix system and, manage it it's it's not really that hard to do the the only problem is is it's not really meant for a lot of use cases like a lot of people aren't actually developing software with their system and that's where nixos shines like also a lot of people don't really have multiple machines so there's like a lot of people that could use nix but probably don't really have a lot of good benefits for them like or benefits for They'll, they they just won't get a lot of the really nice things about Nix that they use a lot. Like it, they'll just be using it for the sake of using it, yeah. which is not a bad idea. I mean, I'm not ever going to say Nix is a bad idea for just learning it because there are because the documentation is crap. You can find great high paying jobs if if you know how to use Nix in and out. That that can get you a job. So uh, that is something that you do have to give to Nix. Like, sure, documentation may be crap, but that shit could land you a job. And that would be nice. I think everyone could like just getting a job from knowing their favorite Linux distro. That's that's pretty cool. So the, the, the only reason Nix OS gets bad rep sometimes is because users are trying to use it for the wrong for the wrong purpose they they want to use it as a regular desktop uh, i mean a regular distro for, uh, for daily use and when its pr primary target is not those kind of people i mean it can be used for daily use but it, it just can not... be by by knowledgeable people not by uh, some john doe who just came from mac or windows it, it it's got a learning curve it's just like you said, like Arch in the early days, where it required a lot of learning curve to, to get it installed in the first place. But NixOS still has that because it still didn't flutter from its from its philosophy of being a more advanced kind of distro. Where, whereas Arch, on the other hand, they're doing their best to make it easier and easier and easier. And now with Arch install, it just takes minutes instead of having to read the wiki over and over and over again to get it through your skull how to configure Wi-Fi. So... Well, I, I think NixOS is getting better there. Their documentation is continuously getting better. Well, also, they have they have a Calamaris installer version, uh, which makes it easier to install. Well, I mean, yeah, they. I mean, for NixOS, you can't just... I, I mean, the, ma the main one that they recommend is their one that just comes with GNOME. And so if you boot it up, you are going to get a working GNOME environment. So, like, for most people, that's fine, too. Well, I mean... It, but they offer both, but their recommended one is GNOME because I, th I think that's yeah. the one that they actually like. And I listen. Uh, to be honest, to be honest, if a distro wants to position itself as a, a stable or not stable as a usable distro, GNOME is the desktop environment to ship with. Like uh, Workstation, and I I get why a lot of distros ship their flagship with GNOME. It's because GNOME is just much easier to understand out of the box versus KDE where you have to hunt for the settings and well I think it's just more stable that's the main and more reason. stable yeah and yeah. I'm using listen I'm I've been using it for uh, for the past 3 4 months on my uh, uh on on my laptop and I am more productive on on gnome because that's... gnome stays out of my way let's pull this Unlike back KDE away from the whole gnome stay. versus KDE stuff cuz that's not the topic um, and I'm not, I know it's not the topic. I'm just saying that uh, NixOS choosing GNOME is a good idea as they're reflective. Every district chooses GNOME, basically. So I have thoughts about NixOS as well. 
And I just figured I'd bring I'd raise up my thoughts last and let you guys talk first because I actually do see a legitimate use case for NixOS and I can also see where it does deserve some of the praise that it does get. Because the, the big benefit of NixOS is the declarative configuration and okay, so what I've got right here is my NixOS configuration. Uh, this is an Etsy nix slash NixOS. This is my configuration.nix. This is off of a freshly installed virtual machine uh, using using just normal BIOS boot. Uh, so you can see where I'm declaring my bootloader configurations. I'm declaring my time zone, my key map, basically all the things that you would typically set yourself. But the big benefit of this is that, let's see if I can find it. I can declare users right here, along with user-defined packages, uh, in just this one file, and I can already and I can configure groups. I can configure per permissions and everything with just a single file. That is the big benefit to NixOS. Now, this means that NixOS, as a whole, can actually have a very uh, specific use case in the cloud market itself. Not necessarily like the user desktop market, but like that cloud that uh, cloud managed for like any cloud system administrators that uh, they're, they're messing around with like Docker containers and such like that. You can declare Docker containers in the in the Nix configuration as well. So if you're not wanting to invest in like Ansible knowledge, but uh, you you can use NixOS as well. And in fact, you can actually use Ansible to deploy NixOS if you really want. But it gives you and what this what this configuration file allows is a completely reproducible system. Now, where NixOS falls short is, of course, documentation. Uh, the NixOS user manual for like getting the system installed, fantastic, until you get to the very bottom of the manual, where it basically <laughs> tells you that at this point we don't know where to go go from here. So if you want to f figure out how to uh, do something on NixOS, you need to look at this this file over here. And basically reverse engineer the, the uh, package and figure it out for yourself. The creators <laughs> of NixOS do that in the in the documentation? It basically used to say that. I don't know if it still says it anymore. But anyways, uh, that's where it falls short. And then the community comes in. They come out with uh, projects such as Flakes and Home Manager. And Flakes, nobody can really explain them. Not properly. But think of Flakes more similar to like a very specified version of Nix's variant of the AUR. And that sort of explains Flakes to you. Uh, for a home manager, it's basically configuration.nix for a user profile. It's really just a way to manage the home directory. You can package up like all of your music files, your video files, your documents folder and everything right there. And uh, it basically expands the reproducibility from the core system down to the user profile at the same time. So yes, Steve, you can make a zero Linux Nix edition if you really want. Way to go to way to go to stab me in the heart. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think Nix OS is definitely going to be something that like lives on for quite a while because it 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 is one of those things where the people who do really use it day in and day out love it. Like, it's it's kind of like the Void gang, you know? Like, Void is not a... Yeah, Void's not popular, but, like, the people who are in it are in literally a gang. Like, they die for each other. Like, they'll, if, if you start an argument as one Void user, there will be six others that will die on that hill with you. Like, they will battle to the end with you. Void has a very strong, tight-knit community, and so does Nyx. Like, I think... I think that's that's also a good argument for getting into Nix. Even though the documentation may be crap, there is plenty of Nix users that I've seen personally offer their day to me to help me do something with Nix or help me use Nix, install Nix. Like, there's plenty of people that will help you. The package manager is kind of useful. I know you can use it anywhere and everywhere. That's what Valve is considering adding in the future releases of Steam OS or whatever, if it ever comes out. But the package manager, I, at first, like I was telling Tyler earlier before we came on, at first I couldn't understand what the heck it was doing, why it was pulling like a million files. But after he explained it to me, I see a very good use for it, especially for people like, uh, on a connection like mine. 
it's very useful to to use a distro that has a package manager that does things the way uh, Nixus does. Uh, it pulls smaller files and it puts them in a tempfs and then moves them to their correct location. And the the ability to have multiple versions of a, a of a package is very useful, especially for developers, as Tyler was telling me. And I could see that, especially for me who maintains packages uh, for Zero Linux, it allows me to to see if I should hold back a package or not. Uh, we're trying to move away from holding back packages, but if we have to, uh, we have a place to put them. And this uh, th this type of methodology or philosophy uh, would work better. So uh, I'm starting to, and you can sort of, kind of do that with Python these days, but Dix does it way better. So it's way beneficial, more beneficial to use a distro like that. I know uh, this is a benefit. But this is as far as I can talk about Nix because I it borked itself in my VM and then I had to remove it. Yeah, so uh, just for the chat here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a link to a Git repository. Uh, this is a Nix config that I came up with uh, several months ago, but when I attempted to uh, daily drive Nix OS myself, uh, I, I, did, I did drop it. But I am curious if there's a Nix OS user that might be listening to this podcast, you know, just uh, s send send an email uh, into into the show uh, with with a, a link to your Nix configuration because I'm personally actually kind of kind of curious on what other people are doing with this. Yeah, that would be really cool if people started sharing their Nix OS configs. Here's my question for you guys: We have two or three different kind of ways that they're thinking about doing immutable distros these days so we have the silver blue kind of way of doing things we have the nix way of doing things you know and then we have the kind of the blended ways of doing things kind of do a bit of both do you guys think that one way is better than the other so this is where i come in and say that nix OS shouldn't even be included in that conversation uh, because the only thing immutable about nix is that yes the root file system is read only that's for good reason, because, you know, you shouldn't be messing around the root file system. You should be managing the configuration file. But that doesn't mean that NixOS is immutable, because you can totally change it if you really want. Well, okay, so I understand what you're coming from there, Josh, but the developers themselves call it an immutable distro, so... I'm sure that they call it. I'm just saying that they shouldn't be included in that conversation. Okay. Well, let's include them in the conversation anyways, just for shits and giggles. <laughs> Do you, let's just say that the developers know what they're talking about and that they think that it's an immutable distro, do you think that there's one way of doing this over the other that is better? Because, guys, Silver Blue is fairly new. Obviously, uh, the OpenSUSE micro OS, or whatever they call it, Aeon, Aeon or whatever it's called now, is 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 fairly new. You've got all the, the new kids on the blocks, like Blend and Vanilla or whatever. All the new immutable distros. They've been around for just a couple years, but NixOS has been around for 20 years. It's been around for a very long time. So if it feels like if this was the way that it was, you know, Linux was going to go, that you know more distros would be emulating it. Well, I don't know because even if we don't go, like I, I know a lot of people do like immutable distros, and there's plenty of people that aren't using them but are interested in them. Uh, but there's also a lot of people that just don't want to use an immutable distro. So to me, I think it, it really doesn't matter which way the majority of Linux systems go, because there will always be choice between the two. I think the, the important part is that we have stuff like Nix or these kind of like universal package managers available that are actually like con continuously developed and improved upon. So you, you can have any type of Linux system that you want, whether it be immutable or otherwise, and still have the access to the same packages on all of them. I think that the more idea between, let's ignore the technicalities behind the how the, the file systems work and the writability and stuff. I know technically that's what immutable is all about, but I think more what people think about when they think of immutable distros, at least I do, is the ability to move forward and back. So like in Nix, you have the generations, right? So every time you run, you know, switch, you go to forward and back generations and it allows you to take your system, you know, either 
towards what your your you know the present or back towards you know let's say you ins you installed GNOME first and then KDE you could go back to just a GNOME same thing like that and then you can do this something similar but it's done completely differently on like Silver Blue Silver Blue and you know all the others they use a combination of like ButterFS snapshots and stuff like that in order to get that stuff done whereas uh, NixOS doesn't use ButterFS at all they they do the generations in a completely different way and it's all based on that configuration file right so it, it just feels like they're doing things completely different but you guys said something earlier that just kind of just to bring it back to the main conversation i think it was you tyler said something about like this fantastic for you and steve this is fantastic for developers right and over the course of the time that i've been using it the more i realize that this really is the distribution that would be great for developers but it's not the only one right obviously developers can use whatever distribution they want but they have so many tools it, it feels like they've developed this for developers and you know because they've created a way to create you know virtual environments that run their own client their own shell and everything together so they can you just basically have a whole Nix shell right there, you know, so you can use it and keep things contained that way. Obviously, you have the generations and stuff like that, and you have all the stuff that is very focused on developing applications and, and creating containers and stuff like that. So uh, it feels like it was very much de designed and developed for people who are developing software, which is leads me to the question, why do you guys think so many normies are using it? Because there are a lot of people, especially, if, uh, this is going on to the people in my Discord, who use it, who are definitely not developers. The same reason so many people use Arch Linux. Because content creators, re yeah, Where because you? content creators have praised mm -hmm. uh, NixOS. Yeah. That's the wrong thing that's happening. This is something wrong that's happening in the... In in uh, uh, in the content creation world, where a lot of them they say uh, they keep portraying NixOS in in, a, uh, in in the wrong way. Well, I don't even know that it's that because I think it's a lot of so because of the lack of good documentation and people being very familiar with there being really good tutorials and that type of content on YouTube. Nix content, if you do a tutorial or that kind of stuff about Nix, it does extraordinarily well on YouTube. So I think a lot of people are getting into Nix knowing that it's something like as long as long as they can get into it and understand it, there's multiple different avenues for them to benefit from that knowledge. And I'm not saying like that's a bad thing at all. I think that's a good thing. But I think that's what causes a lot of people to start using Nix who wouldn't otherwise even be interested in any of the benefits that Nix offers. But I mean, still, nevertheless, those people who wouldn't end up getting into development related stuff, most likely with Nix are going to be exposed to developers. So I don't know, Nix could be a really good way of onboarding young developers into Linux and everything else. That, that was a, that was a, that was awesome of you, Ty, because I'm not used to listening to you saying words of wisdom. <laughs> um, there you uh, go. <laughs> but but it, well, everything you said is true. Uh, because of the documentation is lacking, sometimes the videos kind of... Uh, are kind of are used kind of in a way to complete or reorganize that documentation because the users the content creators making the videos are helping NixOS documentation get better. Yeah, that is true. But like Alex said in the chat, my kuya Alex said in the chat, mostly the top reason why people not normies uh, you try to use Nix is to belong. Because they wanted this feeling of belonging to in to 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 the elite. It's kind of like using NixOS. It, it's kind of like, hey, I'm the I'm part of the elite. Yeah, I mean there is that aspect, but that there there is that aspect with every distro. This is one of the highest aspects these days. Well, I don't know because a lot of I mean the belonging thing is true, but I think with NixOS, that I mean as, as we all know, NixOS has a very tight knit community and it is a pretty it's a really good group to belong to they like it, it doesn't even come from an elite thing 
the feeling of belonging to, to, to any group is nice. Like, I chose Arch for Zero Linux because I wanted to feel I'm part, uh, in a way, not directly, indirectly, uh, I wanted to feel like I was part of the elite. I'm using something that is not used by the masses because of its complexity. Uh, and when I found that Eric Dubois made it so simple using his ALCI script, I was like, it's a... Uh... It was presented to be on a silver platter, but I quickly found out that it wasn't <laughs> as easy as he was portraying. Well, that's it the to problem be. with wanting to wanting to feel superior than everybody with any Linux yeah. distro. Someone's going to script all of the complex things, and if it hasn't make already it look be what it's been a, done, yeah, yeah, and to make months. it look something sure. like, appear like something that it's not. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like right right now, the reason that there are enterprise jobs for Nix OS is it, the actual, like, you know, very talented people already there can't get it, get past the documentation and also have other things to do where they literally can't put in hours trying to figure out the right method to get something to work or how, like, they don't have time for learning uh, and like filling in holes in the documentation, stuff like that. So if you're already familiar with Nix, you already know how to do stuff, then it that can benefit a company. So, but I, again, it's not like there's a lot of companies hiring for Nix OS developers, it's, but it just feels they so exist. weird that a distribution that is solely managed through a terminal and or a configuration file. I suppose you could use it as a regular text editor, but whatever. You know, it, you still have to run commands in the terminal in order to get that to you know you know go forth. So it feels weird that so many normal people who would normally be on the side of doing everything in a GUI are looking towards Nix OS to be their distribution. And it, it makes me wonder, besides the whole being part of the club thing, what features they find once they're there that keep them there. Because usually when, like, every Linux nerd who decides that they're going to invest themselves in Linux at one point or another installs Gentoo, right? But only a select few actually find Gentoo useful and good and awesome. You know, you know, they, they, and they yeah. continued using it, right? I'm sorry. No, there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> Gen, use flags on Gen two is probably one of the is one of those key Linux features that just isn't available on the vast majority of Linux distros out there, and it makes it awesome, right? There's a reason why, like someone who says I use Gentoo, I can understand why that person uses Gentoo because of use flags and the ability to fully control all of your packages and all that stuff, right? When someone says I use Nix OS, unless they're a developer, I have to question what do you find good about it, right? What 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 has drawn not, not really what drew you there cuz maybe you're there because because your friends are all there and it's whatever. But what keeps you there cuz you hold on a second, Steve. Usually when someone, you know, gets on a distribution, the reason why they stay is because they've found features that they enjoy. Like what? What part of the Nix OS experience for I'll the normal I'll tell people? You, I'll tell you. Uh, I'll tell you one. I'll tell you one major one. Uh, uh, one of my friends told me uh, told me that a while ago. It's like you said. It's the total control over the system, uh, kind of like Gen two, and the fact that they can it it ties in with DT's reason for using app images uh, is like they can keep multiple versions of any application that they are using in case they want to go back to a version. Uh, because of one feature works on the older version and there's another feature that doesn't exist in the older version exists on the newer version. They keep switching back but it, and forth. Is that a normal person? That's one of the reasons. Case? That's what one friend, one friend of mine told me. Other than that, I don't know. I think a big, a big aspect that draws people there and keeps them there is if you want to do something different than a lot, than a lot of people aren't doing, Nix covers that. Then there's also the aspect of, well, okay, so I want to do something custom. I want to make it cool. The one worry that a lot of people have is I'm going to have to do this over and over again, and I'm not really interested in doing that. So Nix covers you there. You set up one configuration file. You can do something custom, and that's all you need, and that's that's it. So for someone who wants to do something cool, they've got a free week to mess around with their computer. NixOS is a really good way of doing something different, 
cool and interesting. And once you're done with that configuration, you're done. You don't have to go back. You're not going to get an update that borks it. Theoretically, should never happen. <laughs> you know, nothing's it's perfect. It's actually a lot harder to break NixOS than it is to even break Silver Blue. I've tried. <laughs> the only thing that I found that reliably breaks NixOS is corrupting the file system itself. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah that's a good way of going about breaking <laughs> breaking it breaking anything <laughs> yeah but anyways i so for clarification for, by the way for the chat i am actually a small business owner and because i said owner and not worker i have a very specific use case for both using nixos and not using nixos because as a result because my my place of business is many miles away from my house because i don't work from home I have a computer at my business. I also have a computer here at my home. A big benefit that I can personally see with NixOS is having the same computer in both locations because I can sync that Nix configuration between the two systems and have exactly the same system. Of course, I, I can't use NixOS because some of, the app, some of the applications that I use at work just don't work with NixOS because NixOS is not Linux file system uh, compliant. As in, uh, they put their root directories in different places than what other distros do. And, of course, that breaks many business-related applications or enterprise-related applications. So, I I can't use NextOS, but if that those applications worked, I could actually very well see myself u- be using NextOS. All right, before we jump into the thingies, let's talk a little bit about the package manager. Because that is one of the things that people kind of tout. Uh, not necessarily just because it's on, you know, on NixOS itself, but because it's transportable between different distros. Like the idea be having one package manager that you can have everywhere, kind of like Snap or Flatpaks, but with a much broader selection of packages and the ability to run things that aren't containerized in Snaps or pa- you know Flatpaks. So a lot of people think that the Nix package manager is like, ooh, this thing is really really awesome. I've used it and it pisses me off a lot. Um, because it, just like with Nix OS, they do things differently in ways that really make it hard for the packages that you install to interact with packages that are installed normally. So because they're installed in a, a weird place, they consider, a, they set their own paths and stuff. It, it makes it hard to interact with the rest of the system. So that, that always bugged me quite a bit, but the idea behind it, it is intriguing at least, um, Josh, we you look you had something to say? Uh yeah, so the Nix package manager. Uh just to, just to let everybody know. Nix is actually a source-based distribution. Like actually source-based distribution. But it they they do it very differently from like Gen 2 because you're not always going to be compiling things from source on your system. It's just if you're the first person to install the package as you as it's been declared, yes, you will be compiling it. So every now and then you might call an up an update or a change to your configuration, and you might be wondering why your system ha- why your command is taking three hours because it decided to compile Chromium or something. But anyways, uh, uh, what they do is when when a package gets compiled, it gets pushed into a public cache, and then at at that point, it's sort of it's basically just like a pseudo binary distribution back to you anyway. So if you're the first person to install something, uh, you're going to be compiling. If you're the second person to be installing, uh, that means that somebody already compiled it for you. You can give them a thanks. But the the biggest benefit for the package manager is that they've got over eight eighty thousand applications you can install through it. And the fact that you can install on other distros is not necessarily unique to Nix itself, because you can install package managers on other distributions. Uh, the difference is that with the Nix package manager uh, also can recognize if it's run- running as the system or if it's running as a user and it won't bork your root file system like other others will instead what it'll just be doing is just dropping all of its files in into a brand new folder that it places in the root file system called slash nix yeah so uh i uh, this is one thing that i did test in nix os and the idea that it it's transportable and you can put it anywhere uh it's and you said eighty thousand packages. Well, the AUR has eighty six thousand packages, but AUR I mean, it's cannot still be an com- impressive number. <laughs> yeah. So, but again, like I said earlier, the the fact that you can install multiple versions of a, of an application through that package manager is awesome. And and for connections like mine, 
I, I see a benefit, like Tyler made me aware earlier, that it saves a little bit on a bandwidth and saves on other stuff. So uh, I was wondering why it was pulling all these thousands of files, but uh, it, it does it in a very good fashion and putting them in the TempFS and then moving the the thing. It's a very uh, robust package manager. And speaking of other uh, package manager mo uh, uh, being available to other distros, I found out the other day that Pac-Man is available on Debian and Fedora and whatever and apt is available on arch and fedora yep. and I mean, you so, can put any uh, package manager on whatever distro you want i mean that's been yeah that's i didn't know that for, for i just very long time. I, I just figured that out <laughs> so uh, i'm late <laughs> to the game so uh cool. nick's nick's os package manager is uh pretty neat and i did try it on the steam deck briefly because uh chris like the stack <laughs> recommended it in one of his guides it, it just works it just works and I never had any issues installing packages and dependencies and whatnot, unlike Arch. Oh, the dependency hell, dependency hell on Arch. I love that someone in chat is talking about apt on Fedora. I mean, like, there are some package managers that are meant to go other places, and then there are some that are not. And that's a good example. That and apt RPM does exist, by the way. Theoretically, you can install anything on any distro that you want, if you're willing to put the work yes. in it. Doesn't mean that you should. Exactly. Exactly. It doesn't mean that you should, but you can. But you guys definitely give DNF on OpenSUSE a try. It's actually pretty awesome. But anyways, uh, let's go ahead and move on to the last section. Unless you guys have anything else to say about Next West right now, anything going on? Mm, going not twice? really. All right. So I have been ganged up upon. I have been bullied. I have been trolled. Everyone just piled on and forced me. To change the last section of the show. And we're no longer longer calling them thingies of the week. They are now and forevermore called, God help me, nuggies of the week. Yes. Uh-oh. I'll eat a nuggie of that one. <laughs> oh, I already ate all mine. Dang. Uh, I didn't get any. <laughs> you only uh, got 40. <laughs> anyways, um, so this is the thing where we talk about the things that are interesting. So, Tyler... God damn it. Your nuggy of the week. <laughs> yes. Uh, my nuggy of the week is actually quite simple. I think I've probably talked about it before, um, but I'm not too sure. I may not have. And if I haven't, I'm so sorry, y'all. It's Eddie. Uh, if if you're ever like, you know, needing to install a dev package, Eddie is a great installer. It comes from elementary OS. and But I mean, you can obviously install it anywhere you need to install a dev it it's great i really do love it it's a it's a program that you probably don't need well especially if you know what you're doing you definitely don't need it but it is a very good program it looks good it's fast it does exactly what you expect it to there's no weird settings that you need to mess with like it it's great so that's mine yeah, my nuggy of the week. I forgot to push it to the repo, but uh, I I mentioned it earlier. It's Casa OS. Casa OS basically it's a a, a container manager, kind of like Portainer, but a much simpler version of that. Even my grandma can do it. It's just one command, one terminal com bash command. You run in terminal. That's it. You run this command. It does. So you install those packages, you run the command, you're up and running. And if you want to uh, start installing containers, it's an app manager. It's kind of like a NAS OS. Think about it like a NAS OS, except you can run it on top of your desktop instead of being a full operating system, I'm not giving you full granularity over your, your uh, operating system. Anyway, uh, you run that, you run that, the, you access it via your IP address or local host or whatever you use to remap your local host to. I, uh, I used zero dash vault dot local. Uh, so basically, and the, uh, my problem with it is it doesn't create its own self signed certificate, and thus you will end up with always having this pop up telling you uh, an insecure connection, insecure connection, depends on how you set up your browser. Anyway, uh, but since it's offline for me, I don't care. I just access it and then turn off the computer, but it's so simple, and they allow you to add the for example uh, there's the linux server they have uh, over 10,000 
Docker containers that you can select from. So you can just add that list to the uh, application list and then your list will be populated, updated. And you can just, all you need to do is select the container you want, single click on it, it will do everything for you. And then you, uh, when you want to use it, it opens in a two, new tab and you're up and running. You don't have to think about anything complex at all. You don't have to think about IPs or configurations or whatever. But this one removes the, 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 the need to use Nextcloud, at least if you're using it just locally in your home local air, local network, because it automatically shares all the drives, all the folders, everything. The, uh, there is a big, big problem for me. It even shares the root drive and your root file system. Uh, I talked to the developers and they're going to send me a configuration script to hide the root file system because that's not what I want to share or not what I want to be clicking on by mistake. Uh, but other than that, and it's a work in progress. It's an, it's an open source project with a big community behind it and they're very friendly on the server. Not very active, but very friendly when they are. Uh, and I recommend it. I really, really highly recommend it. If you wanna, if you have a computer that you use as a storage computer, uh, like a NAS, but you wanna have a desktop as well to play around with from time to time, and just and you can access. There is something I asked the developers. I haven't received a, a reply yet. We need a, a phone app for it. There is no phone app. The only the only reply from one user I got just add it to home, open it in your browser, and add it to home screen. Use a web, <laughs> create a web app out of it. Josh, your nuggy of the week, please. Uh, my nuggy of the week is Telnet, uh, the old-fashioned command that we used since before the days of SSH. Uh, it's a it's a remote control protocol, completely not encrypted. But uh, there is a link that I'm going to post here in the YouTube chat. If you're on that command, you can use that to watch the very first Star Wars movie in your yeah. terminal. Arco Linux had that in their very first releases of Arco Linux. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, I've had to use Telnet recently. Uh, you know, talking to old classic servers that don't have SSH installed, but for some reason, Telnet port's open. So uh, that that was fun and interesting. Uh, th thanks, uh, Chinese machines. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like recently, <laughs> I, and I finished watching a video where he was reintroducing us to uh, dial-up internet. <laughs> <laughs> okay oh that's God. actually a wonderful series uh, yeah <laughs> very interesting i missed the handshake um but anyways my nuggy of the week god i hate that name um <laughs> is uh i'm gonna go ahead and choose city skylines 2 it is so if if you ever played city skylines 1 it's that but better it's obviously it's a sequel it plays wonderfully on linux uh, there's a few general like graphics, uh, like artifacts that go on every like rare once in a while. But other than that, it it plays as well as you could expect on any operating system. And if you're into city builders, it's the best one by far. Like it's so so good, um, and it's so much better than the first one even because they they've integrated so many of the mod ideas that were in City Skylines one right into the game. So they've you know done some things with traffic manager and stuff like that. It's just, and the engineering stuff um anyways just it's a really 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 good game if you're into city buildings if you're not into city build city building games then maybe you won't like it but it's like sim city from back in the day but on steroids it's a fantastic game uh all right anyway so that's it for this episode of the linux cast before we go we should talk about the contact information if you want to get in contact with us you can do so in any number of ways the best way is to head on over to the website which i swear is going to get updated again eventually uh, i'm just working on some stuff in the background with it so it does have most of the previous episodes all the way back to season one you can also find the, the blog posts that i've done so far up there as well Josh, you can find him on uh, his his website, tenleyj.com slash contact, I remembered. Uh, Tyler has a YouTube channel where he's actually been posting videos. It's really weird. He's been posting more videos than I have. Um, you can you can head on over there, check him out, make sure you subscribe. Uh, YouTube.com slash zanyog is where you'll find him. Uh, 
Steve is on Faucedon or Mastodon at Faucedon.org slash at zero Linux zero with an X. And you can find all this stuff uh, if you want to find all the rest of their links to their discords and all of their websites and stuff like that. You can find that at the linuxcast.org slash contact. You can follow me, obviously, uh, at the linuxcast on Mastodon as well. And uh, if you want to support me, you can do so at patreon.com slash linuxcast or head on over to the store where you'll find all sorts of awesome merchandise sets at shop.thelinuxcast.org. So before we jump out, we should take a moment take a moment to thank, thank, thank my current patrons thanks everybody who does support me on patreon and youtube you guys are all awesome thank you so very very much for that without you the channel just wouldn't be anywhere near where it is right now and the podcast probably wouldn't still be going just to be honest with you uh half the time i just like yeah, other people really want the podcast we better better do one i'm not going to take the week off uh so motivation it's awesome anyways patreon.com slash nice cast we record this live every saturday at three o'clock p.m eastern time and we switch around topics and i don't know I, I wrote down whose topic it is next week, but I've forgotten. I think it's mine. It's Steve's topic. It's gonna be awesome. I'm sure. Uh, anyways, um, make sure you, make sure you turn in tune in next Saturday if you want to watch this live. If not, we'll have it uh, edited and posted on the channel shortly afterwards. So thanks to everyone for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.